will say I scheduled myself to film this video today because typically Thursday night is a hair washing night and my schedule's all thrown off this week. So you're getting some greasy ass hair. So in today's video, we're gonna talk all about workout programs, specifically some things to look out for. We'll say red and green flags. These are just my opinions and like overall tips because I know especially like with the age of the internet, there are endless choices out there. So why don't we just hop right on into it? We're gonna start with the red flags. I've got some listed here in my handy dandy notes. We're gonna see how many we get through as I do my makeup. First one's an easy one because I talk about it a lot, but you wanna look for certification. So if a coach is selling a program without any certifications, you probably don't wanna choose that one. And let's talk about what I mean by certifications. This could be anything from basic like intro NASM CPT to a 400 hour Pilates certification to a bachelor's in exercise science. Like there's a lot of varying options here, but really what I want you to look for, have they studied in their field at all? At all, because you would be surprised. There are plenty of people selling workout programs who have never opened a textbook, who have never taken a continuing education course. So how can you tell if they have any certifications? My rule of thumb is if you can't find any listed on their website, online, and their bio, they probably don't have them. And I've said this before, so I won't go into like too much detail about it, but I know sometimes people get on me and they're like, well, if you get like a NASM CBT, that doesn't teach you everything. Like that's not the end all be all. That person might not even have better understanding of how to program workout versus someone who's just grew up being an athlete. And you are absolutely correct. But my point is that when you get a certification like that, you must do continuing education to keep that title. So if I see someone who just has an ass in CPT, that says to me, oh my gosh, amazing. You've gone through the first step to educating yourself. And I know that at least every two years, you need to recertify, which means you need to continue your education. And that's the point. All right, the next red flag we want to look out for is a program that sells you X results in a certain time frame. 12 weeks to tone, six weeks to a snatched waist, four weeks to summer abs. It's not realistic, and quite honestly, it's not even how the body works. Most of these programs are selling an aesthetic result based on the creator's years of training, but also their genetics that support that aesthetic result. So when you see someone pushing a program, that sells, I don't know, abs, summer abs, right? Most of the time what you're gonna see is a lot of crunching movements, a lot of abdominal focus movements, and this is something we call spot reduction. Spot reduction doesn't exist, unfortunately. Again, I won't go into too much detail because I've discussed it before. Essentially, the idea is like, if I do a bunch of crunches, I'll lose my belly fat and get abs. And once again, not how the body works. You can't choose where you lose fat on the body. So if you're doing said crunches, what you're actually doing is working out your rectus abdominis or your abdominal muscle fibers. It has nothing to do with your fat tissue. They're two separate things. So to lose fat in the abdominal area, you have to be in a caloric deficit, basically just taking in less energy than you're expending. That's the only way that science has shown us so far that we lose fat on the body. And then your genetics determine where you lose fat on your body first. So again, people selling a program like this are selling a program based on their own genetics, which is stupid. All right, and the last one is something I haven't talked about before. So we'll see if I can flush this out concisely. I want you to look out for coaches who sell programs that look nothing like their own training. I'm not saying that you need to do your own program or have done your own program to get X result, because once again, everyone's going to react differently to exercise, right? So to put out a program and be like, this program changed my body and my life and it's gonna do the same for you is stupid. <laughs> we wanna look for programs that are supported by the science behind it, not the personal anecdotal experience. Let me give you some examples. Right now, Pilates, sculpting, exercises, very trendy. So you see a lot of coaches like selling that type of content, but then pretty often you'll see their own workout routine and it's them lifting heavy in a gym. So essentially coaches are selling you X result from doing X exercise, but they're doing something else. 
I just see so much marketing around like, this is my unique method of Pilates and sculpting and body weight toning, blah, 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 blah. And then you're in the gym doing the fucking leg press machine. Again, I'm not saying you have to do your own workout program. I'm not saying that you can't vary the types of movement that you do. But if what you're selling to people, like ideologically does not line up with what you do, like if what you're selling isn't even good enough for you, why would it be good enough for your clients? And that's a hypothetical question because I know the answer. All right, we got through all of those and I'm finishing up the last part of my makeup. So those are all of the red flags. The rest of the video, we're gonna touch on the green flags, like things to look out for, the positive spins on things. And I'll just kind of take you along with my day. It's a not too wild Friday. Fridays have been like notorious recently for being absolutely packed and insane. But on the docket, I and I'm teaching a core class this morning, Megan V. Stallion. I actually have taught this class before, but I don't like the filming of it. I've just gotten better at I'm better filming myself. So I'm in the process of going through and refilming so that the quality is higher. We gotta edit that class. I have a virtual client. Then I have to get my butt to the gym. I have another virtual client. Then I have a big break. So I'll get a lot of admin work done. Two Fit Club Fridays in there with my unlimited members. And I'm going live on Instagram with someone. And we're gonna talk about like habits around your health during the summer. And then I'm done at like 5.20. It's gonna be a good Friday. Let's keep on going. Taking you in this moment, come get close like your own name. Read your aura, you want more of all this love, you'll be your name. Release all of your burdens, it's been me, you'll be searching. Take a load off and your clothes off, just relax, you deserve it. You can be okay. I just got done my workout, not gonna lie, not very fulfilling. You know, I was supposed to do a full body pull day, but I have noticed over the last week, my left knee has just been like kind of wonky. So I've been giving it rest. So this was my first workout in about a week and a half because Kevin and I also took a trip to Portland and I didn't leave the house on my last planned workout day because, you know, New York City was the apocalypse. I went today and I was like, all right, well, full body pull, I can probably still do like my heavy deadlifts and be okay. I got there and here's the only issue with that gym that I go to. There's so many like rows that they will perch on a platform or add a piece of equipment or at a machine for an entire hour. I'm talking 10, 15 minute breaks between like two reps of a deadlift. I'm like, I understand needing rest time, but like if you're taking every trap bar and every platform that's available for over an hour, like you're the problem. Anyway, so I was just like, okay, there's no trap bars available. There's no platforms available. It's my sign. I'm just going to do an upper body day. I don't know, it just wasn't like super fulfilling. I'm also just having like a weird body image day. Again, we were in Portland. I ate all the food, all the drinks. I'm just like puffy. But when you have to like see yourself on camera moving, it's not like, it's not always fun, you know? Just sharing that to make sure that everyone knows that like that happens to everybody, even people who are very confident in their skin. Made a quick trip to CVS and forgot my reusable bag. So that's why it looks like I have a giant tall boy. <laughs> we're gonna head home eat some lunch nourish ourselves i got another client and then we'll check back in and we'll talk about some green flags to look for in programming okay so the first green flag is a coach or a program who uses body neutral language so instead of focusing on blasting fat shredding your waist i want you to look for phrases that discuss power strength stability, endurance. We talked a lot about genetics and how the body works earlier and like why this is important. You know, personally, I would rather just give my money to someone who I know is not trying to like swindle me, trick me, and is also more concerned about how I feel and how I perform than simply how I look. Another important green flag or just something to think about is matching with your coach's energy style or the program's programming style. Obviously there's tons of different types of programs like gym programs, follow along routines, one-on-one -on -one coaching, like whatever it is, whatever the program is that you're looking at, just make sure you enjoy it. 
And then if it's something like what I offer, you know, live classes or on-demand classes, like you want to make sure you enjoy their vibe if you have to see and hear them. And then finally, my favorite green flag is whenever a coach really truly believes in what they're selling. This kind of ties back in with that last red flag of like coaches who sell one thing but do another. And again, I'm not saying that you can't do different things, change up your routine, try things that aren't within what you sell. But basically, like if a coach's core personal workout program looks completely, vastly, wildly different from what they're selling, I don't know, I just think that's weird. I know I'm harping on that a lot, but I think that's a point that I've never really talked about before. And again, I'm trying to flush it out. But you can take me for example. Obviously, right now, as I've documented on this channel and on Instagram, I have joined a gym in my neighborhood and I am working with some different equipment that I would have access to at home. And at first glance, you might go, oh, well, she's selling at-home workouts, but she goes to a gym to work out. So that doesn't mesh well together. If we really tear it back, it's all still strength training. Like, it's not like within my programming at home, I'm doing lightweight high rep workouts, but then going to the gym and lifting really heavy. You can still lift heavy at home. You can still work on different movement patterns at home. And actually when I'm going to the gym, I'm not always just working heavy. I'm just utilizing things like trap bars, cable machines that I don't have in this building. But I'm still working on those basic strength and movement patterns within my programming for my clients. So one more time, I'm not saying that you can't enjoy and try other things. Like movement should be fun, it should be joyful. You should experiment and find diversity because we have diversity in our movement and daily life. And you don't need the most best optimal workout every single time. But if you're selling X program that you're claiming improved your mindset and improved your body and you lost weight and now you feel the best in your entire life, but you didn't do that program to get there, you're a snake oil salesman, my friend. Okay, that was fun. Today's been a weird day. It's about 4.15. I have one more Fit Club Friday chat with someone I've never met before. So I'm very excited for that. And we're gonna be talking about postpartum stuff, exercises, nutrition, all of that. And then I'm into the weekend. So I'm gonna leave it here. If you have any requests on other topics you'd like me to kind of flush out and talk about, let me know. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. And I will see you all in the next one.